The story is about Han Yu, who is 40 years old. After he is reincarnated, he returns to his 20-year-old self. He then joins the company that he used to work for. He changes his past as well as his colleagues. Together, they develop mobile phones and Apple. Let's get into the story. A man stands in front of a large screen showing the news. Congratulations, you are now the director. Han Yu, the new CEO of Hansung Electronic, a lightning fast choice, from a civil servant. The man curses, you bastard, you finally made it. Do you like it? Standing in such a high place, you like it, right? As a brother, I have to be happy, right? But in my heart I don't like it because I hate you. Hans Hui, the new CEO of Hansung is the deputy director Han Yu, from a civil servant, at the age of 40. Han Yu, the myth of that person continues. The wife sitting opposite Han Yu says, All the headlines are plastered with your name. You have lived in madness and waited for this day. He laughs loudly. I know the moment the ring on my wife's hand disappears. He picks up a glass of wine and says, Congratulations, right? As a family? Han Yu thinks to himself, Today must be the day I receive congratulations from everyone. The wife asks resentfully, Do you have something called a family? Today must be the best day of my life. The wife continues, You are someone who only cares about your own success. He looks worried. What's wrong with you? The wife pushes the ring forward and then says, I have made my decision. He says to himself, I was angry but I had to be cold. The phone suddenly rings, making Han Yu confused. Looking up, it was the VIP phone number calling. He gestures for silence and then answers the phone. Yes, Chairman, this is Han Yu. Yes, yes, no. I'm resting now. Please tell me. The chairman on the other end of the line replies, Thanks to your decision, Han Sung is gradually returning to normal. The board of directors also didn't say much, very satisfied. Han Yu flatters, How lucky, Mr. Chairman. I will try harder not to become anyone in the chairman's business philosophy. The wife says to herself, Next to him, I feel suffocated, not like a human being. After saying that, she gets up, ignoring Han Yu behind who is still saying, Yes, Mr. Chairman. He hears the sound and turns around to see his wife walking away. Han Yu glanced at him, then turned his head to continue the phone call, Please go ahead, sir. The director continued, But this, Deputy Director Han Yu, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. From now on, you are the director, right? Director of Hansung Electronics. No matter what you say, write the restructuring, if you have done it, I want to finish it quickly. As a director, you should have good results for your first job, right? Han Yu seemed to not understand. He closed his eyes and thought silently, then hesitated and said, Chairman, cutting down more manpower will be difficult. The public opinion and the image of the company are also affected. The chairman interrupted him, Director Han, what's wrong with you? You are not professional at all. Han Yu said again, Please reconsider, sir. The chairman held a cigarette on his lips and said, Then Director Han, why do you judge like that? I request, you just follow the request. It's not the first time, and I put you in this position not to be timid. Remember that. Han Yu endured the humiliation and followed, Yes, I know, sir. I will follow the instructions. He turned back to the dining table, cut a piece of beef, the knife was full of blood. Han Yu angrily scolded, You bastard, why did you give me a bloody knife? He stabbed the beef and then picked it off the plate. The lonely room only echoed the sound of cutlery on the plate. In front of the company gate, many people held signs and protested against the arbitrary restructuring. The security guards whispered to each other, Who are those people? Today is the first day of work for the new director, and they let him do that, huh? They are the people who used to work here not long ago, the people who quit. A security guard looked at his watch and said, Hey, 
It's time for the executive directors to show up. A security guard asked, What should we do, sir? He said sternly, What else? Disperse them right away. The other security guards rushed up. Yes, sir. The executive directors were walking out, and the security guards bowed one by one. The outside was still noisy. Han Yu's car arrived, and the noise caught his attention. He said calmly, There are many people coming to congratulate, ha. Huh? The security guard approached the car door, then opened it. Han Yu stepped out slowly. The staff lined up in two rows and bowed. Director. Hello, sir. Welcome to your first day of work. The secretary reported to the director. Today's schedule is expected to have a direct meeting of the Research Institute and the Board of Directors. And her words were interrupted by the noise of the person behind. Get away from me. I have to see him. The security guard tried to stop him. You are not the person who can see him. Hurry up and go. He shouted loudly. Director. Director. Do you remember the name Wu Jiang, sir? I mean Wu Jiang, your brother. Hai Yu Hyun said, let go of him. What's going on? Senior Kim Jong Kim. The man asked again, do I look like your senior? Hai Yu Hyun said casually, just talk comfortably. Are you well, sir? Kim Rang Ka looked at him with a hateful expression and said, Although I don't know if you remember, Wu Jiang, your brother's brother, Director Wu Jiang is dead. I guess you know what I mean. Your irresponsible decision killed him. So you have to stop by once, right? I guess you don't care either. Everyone was silent, no sound. Hayu Hyun turned his head and asked the secretary, evening schedule? She looked at the current list, the evening schedule is still not available, sir. He replied, leave it. Kim Jong Kim cried out in misery, shouting, Ha! At noon, at the company, office workers were trying to finish their work. Han Yu was listening to the report in the office. A day too long. Han Yu left in the car. The driver asked him, Where are you going, sir? The director looked tired and replied, Funeral home Hansa Hospital. The driver started the car, I'll take you, sir. The night fell slowly. The car ran fast on the road. At the parking lot of the funeral home, Han Yu arrived. He opened the car door. Behind him there was a voice, Ago, fired, couldn't find a position and left in a hurry like this? Isn't that too much? He took all the fat bait and threw him away. Then he should have helped him to another place. The problem is the boss. The man smoking said. Who is the commander of the restructuring this time? The man standing replied, Who else, Deputy Director Han Yu? Because of his success in restructuring that time, he got the position of director. Stabbing someone in the back and succeeding like that is great, right? Han Yu walked past the people who were whispering and whispered, Director Han Yu didn't hear us say everything, did he? Another person replied, So what? We didn't say anything wrong. He has no humanity at all. I heard that when their team started to sink, he switched to another team right away. He is the only person in the world who only thinks about himself. Hai Yu Hyun stepped inside and looked at the portrait of Wu Jiang. There was incense smoke in front of him. Hai Yu Hyun whispered to himself. This is not what I wanted. He put his hand on the ground and bowed his head. He remembered the words he had heard. Do you know what the consequences of your choice will be? A man shouted angrily while the others tried to stop him. You are making many innocent people powerless. This is a decision that hurts everyone. Hayu Hyun closed his eyes tightly. When he went outside, he said to the driver. I will drive, so you can go. He drove fast. As he drove, he asked himself. Did I do something wrong? Today should be the best day of my life when I received the reception from everyone. There was a butterfly flying gently in front of him. 
the car rushed forward, and then the body of the butterfly was crushed by the headlights. He thought to himself, but I have no parents, family, friends, no one to be proud of. He recalled the words of his wife, you are someone who only cares about your own success. Hanyu became more and more angry. He stepped on the gas, his eyes crazily looking ahead. Suddenly, the traffic light turned red. He braked sharply, did I hit something? He slowly looked up and saw the figure of a man walking. His voice became hesitant, Quan. He Jang? He widened his eyes, Wu Jang. Hanyu was shocked. How could he be dead? He closed the car door. Wu Jang. Hanyu doubted and said softly, impossible. On the dark and quiet road, a figure ran out of the car, running forward, shouting, stop there. Stop. The fog began to surround the traffic light that was showing red. The fog made everything around the figure who was running and yelling become a blurry and illusory scene. He stopped, pondered, and then disappeared. That was Han Yu. He looked around and said softly, Where is this? Suddenly, Han Yu's eyes saw something. A bar like this in the heart of the city? Han Yu couldn't believe his eyes. He doubted and said, This is. The bell on the door rang when a guest opened the door and entered. Han Yu stepped inside the bar. Welcome. A man standing at the bar was wiping a glass of wine and smiled at him. Han Yu was amazed at the bartender. The sign of this bar was Holly Molly. At the bar counter, Han Yu sat down and said, Give me a strong drink. The drink was poured into a glass, Han Yu tilted his head, and drained it. Han Yu breathed a sigh of relief. The bartender asked softly, You drink too fast, is it a day like that? A day that should have received congratulations, but only alone. The bartender standing at the counter looked at Han Yu and said. The shop of the bar began to appear white misty smoke, there was a sound, the light of the sign was shining brightly, suddenly weakened and then turned off completely. I just try to live. Why does everyone hate and leave me? Han Yu was sad, helpless and sad. Why does everyone become unhappy because of me? Where did it go wrong? Han Yu whispered as he lifted his glass of wine and poured another one. The bartender poured wine for Han Yu and asked, If you could change, would you change? Han Yu continued to drink another glass. Han Yu collapsed, breathed a sigh, and put the empty glass on the table. Everything makes you regret. The bartender said. Everything has regrets in life. Han Yu looked at the glass of wine in his hand, smiled and said. If I could go back. Han Yu squeezed the glass of wine, the bartender also raised his glass of wine, smiled and said. I wish you happiness. Two glasses of wine clinked, making a sound. Han Yu drank the glass of wine he had just toasted. Han Yu fainted and collapsed on the table, the glass of wine spilled, rolling on the table. After a while, the sun rose higher, shining one rays of light on everything around. At the towering skyscraper, blocking the sunlight, two people bumped into each other. Ah! The boy in the orange shirt suddenly exclaimed. The other person was doubtful, puzzled, looking at the boy in the orange shirt. He smiled at the skyscraper in front of him and said. Finally, I arrived at Hansung Electronic. It's magnificent. He smiled and exclaimed. Han Yu was astonished to see the boy. Wu Jang. Han Yu couldn't believe it and shouted in shock. Wu Jang, who is dead, is standing in front of me. Han Yu panicked, thinking, did I go back to Wu Jang's youth? Han Yu couldn't believe it. Confused, he thought, my dream is to work there. Wu Jang, in his youth, smiled beaming, now there is only one step left, just the interview. Han Yu, in his teenage form, stood next to Wu Jiang, looking at him in astonishment, silent. The wind blew, making the leaves flutter outside the huge building of Han Sung Company, then suddenly a weird kid appeared. 
Han Yu recalled the past, looking at Wu Jiang's bright smile, his whole body full of youthful energy. In front of him, he remembered him saying, it was very hard to pass the resume screening at Han Song. Han Yu thought, it was very hard, very hard to pass the resume screening. Wu Jiang smiled and looked at Han Yu friendly, what's going on, buddy? Han Yu was amazed, thinking, I hope everything goes well. Wu Jiang smiled, could it be that you also? Han Yu didn't answer Wu Jiang but was amazed to see his reflection in the glass from the door of the store on the street. Han Yu was amazed to see the reflection of a young man in the mirror, couldn't believe it and thought, is that me? Han Yu couldn't believe it, touching his face and thinking, are these my twenties? Han Yu was shocked, thinking, could it be because of that glass of wine? Han Yu pondered, doubtful, and said, I remember I drank a whole glass of wine, in the glass there was only ice left. Han Yu still couldn't believe it. He still touched his face, softly said, is this real? Han Yu pinched his cheek. The pain from his cheek made him realize this was real, not a dream. He was stunned, speechless. An old phone. Han Yu shouted. What era is this phone from? Han Yu said while laughing. Then, Han Yu felt his pocket. He saw a piece of paper with Han Sung written on it. Han Yu looked at the phone in his hand and said, The message on the phone showed a notification, Congratulations, you have passed the preliminary screening before 1300 hours on the 2nd of next month. Looking at the content of the message, Han Yu thought, 29 slash 0 slash 2007 at 1229. Han Sung. Congratulations, you have passed the preliminary screening. Han Yu looked at the message and thought to himself, that's right, this message. Was that kid back then Wu Jiang? Han Yu was amazed and thought, it's 2007 indeed. This is the year I got accepted into Han Sung. Staring at the phone, Han Yu said softly, what is this? Behind him, a group of people were coming. The old man in the front turned his head and asked the guy with glasses. How is the preparation for the presentation going? The guy with glasses hesitated and said. That. The old man bumped into Han Yu, making him almost drop the phone. The old man did not look back, he said casually. Sorry, I'm in a hurry. The situation of Han Sung is not certain yet, so I haven't. The guy with glasses passed by Han Yu and said to the old man in front of him. Han Yu looked at him in astonishment. Kim Jong Kim? Han Yu was shocked when he saw the guy with glasses. He remembered the image of Kim Jong Kim angry, glaring at him and saying. Wu Jang is dead. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's because of your irresponsible decision that you killed someone else. No way. Han Yu couldn't believe it. Senior Kim Jong Kim is still the same as when he was young. Wu Jang stood next to Han Yu and admired Kim Jong Kim. The old man said. We will contact the person in charge, so we have to do it on schedule by all means. Kim Jang answered. Yes. Is it 2007 now? Han Yu thought to himself. Wu Jiang suddenly spoke. That's so cool. Han Yu turned to look at him. If I worked at Han Sung, I would be cool like that too, right? Wu Jiang looked at the people walking ahead with admiration and said. Han Yu didn't say anything, he thought to himself, is that so? Wake up, young Wu Jiang. Han Yu looked at Wu Jiang smiling with a burning desire in his eyes. He thought to himself. That place will ruin you. I have a small favor to ask you. Han Yu struggled to speak, not looking at Wu Jiang. If you ever meet me again, don't ever put your feelings into someone like that. Hearing what he said, Wu Jiang was confused. Wu Jiang was baffled, didn't understand anything, looked at Han Yu and asked. Really? You also passed the resume screening of Han Sung, right? Wu Jiang patted Han Yu's shoulder and happily said. If everything goes well, we will be colleagues. Han Yu raised his hand. Wu Jiang still didn't understand what he wanted. Can we shake hands once? 
Knowing that Wu Jiang didn't understand him, Han Yu said. Wu Jiang. Wu Jiang was puzzled and said. Oh, okay then. Wu Jiang happily shook hands and said. We must work together. The two shook hands. They squeezed each other's hands tightly. Indeed, he was the person with the warmest hands than anyone else, Han Yu thought to himself. Han Yu was moved, thinking, the two smiled and shook hands. Han Yu and Wu Jiang shook hands. Wu Jiang was a bit embarrassed. You're squeezing too hard. Yu Hian immediately said. Sorry. To ease the awkward atmosphere, he Jiang jokes. It's okay, you're strong. Yu Hian had traveled back to the world of twenty years ago, where life was less modern. The old shops and signs were still there. Facing the situation he was in, Yu Hian thought. But the knowledge I learned, no matter what it is, can't explain this situation. As my five senses tell me that this is reality, not a dream. Yu Hian still couldn't believe it. He wondered, did I really go back to the past? He looked at the stack of newspapers on the shelf of a grocery store. Yu Hian was surprised to see the headline of the newspaper, Chairman Li Hian Wu. He remembered a few days ago he was still by his side. When he closed his eyes, he was still alive, right? Yu Hian widened his eyes thinking about the chairman who was still alive. In his mind, he started to hear a vivid sound. It was the sound of a car crash. No one seemed to survive there. He continued in his stream of imagination. Then, Yu Hian was scolded, you idiot. He realized then that this was his past. Yu Hian opened his phone and pressed it. He wondered if he had really gone back to the past. The phone rang on the other end. How is my beloved son? Yu Hian realized he was still alive. He choked up and called his mother. His mother heard his voice was not okay and asked worriedly. Yu Hian, what's wrong? He still hesitated. His mother continued to care. What's wrong with you? He kept calling his mother. His mother joked. What's the matter? Calling like that makes me nervous. You ran out of money, right? That's right, you're so young, where do you get money from? How much do you need? I'll go to the bank right away. So don't worry, just tell me, my son. Yu Hian was touched and said, Thank you, mom. He said to himself, This is what I wanted to say all my life. The scene returned to that city. Where the bus was slowly moving. Yu Hian was on the bus, meditating. He thought, Memories flickered, flickered. The bus stopped. Yu Hian got off at the station. He was walking calmly when deep in the alley there was a gang of thugs gathered there. Yu Hian sensed it. The leader asked. Is that him? His men admitted. That's him. The boss exclaimed in innocence. That's right, good job. Teach him a lesson, will you? The boss threw his cigarette on the ground and went after Yu Hian. Yu Hian came to a store and realized, I remember, it's here. He raised his hand to text the password, but he seemed to forget. He called his mother, Mom, what's the password for my room? The mother and son finished talking, and a while later he opened the door to the house. He turned on the light, and the light brightened the whole house. A line of encouragement appeared, don't regret. Next to the old calendar, the table, chairs, and books were still very messy. He realized, this is me. Why is it like this? On the table, red ink spilled all over the paper. He said to himself, why do I have to struggle so much by myself? That's why you're a fool, Han Yu. A gang of thugs had appeared in front of the house and shouted, we know you're in there. You little brat. As soon as they finished speaking, the door opened. The boss threatened, come out. You hurt someone and ran away, you think we can't find you? Yu Hyun didn't understand what they were doing. They rushed into the room and said, because of a brat who wanted to have fun, he had to lie motionless, 
while the attacker walked around in the world. Isn't this world too unfair? He recognized these guys. Oh, I remember. He was in a hurry because he was late for the interview. He bumped into something at the bus stop. The girl on the ground said in pain, What should I do? Chong Jang. Yu Hyun apologized, I'm sorry. I'm in a hurry because I have something urgent. Tra Rang kept bleeding. And the girl questioned, What are you going to do? Chong Jang is on his way to surgery. I ask you what are you going to do? Yu Hyun was confused, Ha! Huh? He thought at that time he only had one thought, Don't be late for the interview. The girl scolded, Hey, uncle, you hit someone and act like you don't know? Yu Hyun ignored her and realized, Oh, the bus is here. He took out his phone and said, If the kid has any problem, contact this number. I have something urgent now. The girl doubted, It's not a fake number, right? Yu Hyun left, How could that be? The girl was careful, Wait a minute, uncle. She tried calling the phone number and sure enough Yu Hyun's phone rang. She said, You're lucky with that number. If my dad was here, he wouldn't let you go so easily. She called her dad, Dad, I'm here, I got hit by someone. Yu Hyun hurriedly said goodbye, I'm sorry, the bus is here. The gangster stared and asked, Why don't you answer the phone, you dog? You think we can't find you if you ignore the phone? Ha! Huh? Yu Hyun was surprised and asked, How did you find this place? Seeing the gangster, he remembered something and thought, Since then I don't trust anyone. The gangster saw him like that, handed him a stack of papers and said, Look, this is Chong Jang's diagnosis. The hospital fee is not cheap. What are you going to do? The gangsters saw Han Yu didn't say anything, his face was sweating, they shouted louder, he can't walk anymore. You have to take responsibility for hurting someone, you straight dog. How dare you ignore the phone, you damn dog. Yu Hyun lowered his head, covered his face with his hand and said, I'm sorry, I'll send the hospital fee right away. The gangsters heard that and laughed happily as if they had won a big prize. But then Han Yu laughed, his hand also left his face. He looked at the gangsters and said, You think I would say that? The gangster holding the papers saw that, his eyebrows furrowed and said, Look at this bastard. Then he spat out the toothpick he was chewing and said, You bastard, you have to learn the law. The younger brother behind him also echoed, That's right, he's so stupid. On Han Yu's side, he still looked at the gangsters, thinking, if I give them money now, I'll go back to the dead end in the past, a dead end that can't be overcome. Then he took out his phone, turned it on, pointed it straight at the gangsters and took a picture. The gangster leader saw that, snorted at him and asked, What are you doing? What are you taking pictures for? Yu Hyun didn't answer those questions, still pressed the phone, asked again, How many times have you sucked people's blood like this? The gangster didn't understand what he was asking, so he asked back, What? Yu Hyun put the phone to his ear as if calling someone, then looked at the gangsters and said, I'm asking you how many times have you sucked people's blood like this? The gangster was even more angry, looking at him and said, What do you think we are, you dog? At that moment, as the phone connected the call, Yu Hyun said, Hello, is this the police station? The gangster heard the word police and was scared. What are you doing? Turn off the phone. But Yu Hyun didn't stop and continued, I'm calling to report that someone broke into my house without permission. At that moment, he was furious and rushed to attack him, shouting, I told you to turn off the phone. Han Yu saw him coming and calmly talked on the phone. Then, he dodged his attack, making him unable to stop and rush straight past him. At that moment, Han Yu wondered in his head, body automatically reacts. He saw the gangster trip over his leg and fall, then he wondered more, what happened to my body? He looked down at his leg, thinking, my leg just automatically kicked the gangster? After confirming, he confidently thought, I must be faster now. The gangster got up and hit, but didn't understand what happened and plunged straight down to the floor, making his men behind also panic. Big brother. 
The guy in the blue shirt hurried up and said, It's time, you bastard. Another one added, You're playing dumb, you can't leave that kind of person alone. The phone camera was also turned on by then. Han Yu also took a picture of their behavior earlier. He looked straight at the remaining ones. Why? Any reason why I can't call the police? You said I was wrong. The guys were angry, but hesitated and said, What? A hand grabbed a stick. It turned out that the gangster who fell earlier had grabbed a cane and looked at Han Yu while he was saying, In a rule of law country, you have to be punished if you commit a crime. When Han Yu was saying, You guys said I was wrong, right? Let's go to the police station and sort it out. Then he got up, stood behind him, and prepared to hit him. His sidekick over there, the guy in the blue shirt, also rushed over, you bastard, who are you trying to trick? At this point, Hanyu looked back and also discovered that the guy was about to hit him. Then he dodged his head to the side, causing the cane to miss and hit the face of the guy in the blue shirt who was rushing over. At this point, Hanyu thought, I can't tolerate these people anymore. Then he prepared to fight back. Then he raised his index finger and hit the face of the guy holding the cane, thinking, once you hit, you have to hit hard so you don't regret it. He made the gangster's face bloody and messy, blood splattered everywhere, and then he also fell back, lost his balance and fell to the floor. Hanyu pressed something on his phone. Suddenly, the police sound rang out. Hello, hello. Please tell us your location or address. We will send someone right away. In case of emergency, please go to a safe place. Please tell us your address. Hello? Hanyu calmly asked the remaining guy. After this, I will tell you guys. You guys are injured and report to the police. Then he put the phone to his ear and said. Hello? The address here is. The guy saw that and backed away, saying, Damn, sorry, we're leaving now. He left a sentence, then ran away, ran down the stairs. The guy was still mumbling to himself. What the hell is this? I said I didn't want to do this kind of thing from the beginning. The door also closed right after that. Han Yu conveniently locked the door. The two gangsters also woke up. The guy in the blue shirt stuttered. The door. He looked straight at the two men. Did you think I would let you go easily? The scream echoed in the sky. After a while, the sound also quieted down and everything returned to the neighborhood with a clear, peaceful sky. The pen was writing the words, From now on, I will live virtuously. The gangster just now handed the paper to Han Yu. I have finished writing, sir. Han Yu held the stick, sitting on the chair. From now on, live decently, understand? The two gangsters also replied, Yes, from now on we will live virtuously. Receiving both papers, he said, Now go away. The two gangsters heard that, and ran full speed down the stairs. Out to the outside, the two men cursed. Damn, what kind of monster is that? What's going on today? I thought I was going to die. If I had known he was like that, I wouldn't have messed with him. Han Yu stood on the floor looking down, hearing everything. He thought to himself, the stain that once appeared in my life was gone. Just now. Then, he turned his face to the street and smiled and continued, I just erased a stain for real. Seeing the peaceful neighborhood scene, he thought, that's good. Whether it's a dream or reality, the opportunity to change is definitely real. Then, Han Yu smiled and thought, I don't know if I'll go back to reality when I open my eyes tomorrow. Until then, he enjoyed the wind blowing through. It was great, try to change as much as possible. Outside the window, it was still dark. Finally, the whole room was lit up. Han Yu was awakened by the light. When he woke up, the scene around him was still like yesterday, nothing changed. He talked to himself, still the same, still not waiting to return to reality. Stretching his arms, Hanyu sat up, stretched his shoulders, stretched his waist, stretched his muscles, comfortably and laughed. 
suddenly, he realized something had changed. It turned out that his old body had been replaced by a young, flexible body. He exclaimed, the body is light, more agile. No more back pain, shoulder pain. It's fun to be young. Wait a minute, even if you're young again, you wouldn't forget how to play golf, right? Han Yu's hand was in the state of holding a golf club. He said, and raised his arm high, I still remember the theory well. Then, he swung forward, imagining that he really had a real golf club in his hand. He calmly said two words, good job. The scene of his row of houses was very peaceful. The pot of food on the stove was boiling. Han Yu seemed to be talking to himself. He had finished his work at the library. It was the day he was asked to mark and note down, interview with Han Sung on June 2nd. Interview with Han Sung Electronic. He pondered a bit. He wondered if he should join the interview like in his previous life or not. Was there any reason to enter that hell again? Now there was only one more step. Only the interview left. His dream was to work there. At that time, in his previous life, he was still a passionate young man. He thought that if he worked at Hansung, he would be cool too. He remembered his good brother Wu Jang. He remembered the scene of him standing in front of his portrait. The reason to come back. He lowered his eyes a bit, and whispered to himself. There is. If so, what should he do from now until the interview day? What to think, there is only one thing. It was raining outside. The bus was running on the road. When it reached the toll station, the sky had cleared and brightened. The traditional market. The traditional market was always bustling and lively. Buyers and sellers. A clear bucket of kimchi was also fresh and being processed. The person who did it was none other than Han Yu's mother. She seemed to be old, so her back hurt after sitting for a while. She tilted her neck, sighed, and patted her back. Then, she carried the kimchi barrel to a corner, put it down, and softly called. Han Yu. Han Yu was neatly dressed, standing outside the door. My mother. Looking at the woman who was busy inside, the corners of her eyes had wrinkles from the years. He remembered the past. The moment when the government brought the property seizure notice to the debtor's house, Han Yu. Is that right? Now we will proceed to confiscate the tangible assets. Property seizure notice, 2003 number 7144. Hongsu Local Court, January 15, 2003. The property seizure notice was stuck on the TV, meaning it would be confiscated. Han Yu had just returned home, still standing in front of the door, he saw a lot of people busy in his house, but they were taking all his furniture away. He shouted. Dad. His father was pouring wine. He sat in a corner of the room drinking. Han Yu stood behind him. What did you do, Dad? Quit your job at the company and then do business to show the whole family this? Say something, justify yourself. No matter how he asked, he just sat there silently. Mom ran over to stop him. Yu Hyun, stop it. Dad also wanted to do well but it turned out like this. His sister also called him. Brother, he continued to say to his mother. Mom, even so. It shouldn't be like this. And dad is still drinking. He seems to hear nothing. Just keep drinking. I just need to study, don't worry. From now on, mom will also work. Mom said again. A boss mom said there was a vacancy at the market. He answered, that soup stall, right? Mom said, when will you try to trade? That? Son. His mother said again. Are you looking down on me? It may not look like it, but people everywhere say that I'm a good cook. Now is the time to show off my skills. His mother was mixing kimchi. She saw Han Yu and happily called her son. Han Yu was still standing there. He had been watching his mother, who kept saying. You have to eat something, right? 
Why did you come all the way here if you didn't eat anything? You said you cook for yourself, but I bet you don't eat well. You should have told me an hour before you came, right? Then I would have known to buy some meat for you. Her nagging sounded like a lullaby. She said and poured some water for him. I wonder if this picky kid can eat the food at the market. If I knew you were coming, I would have bought some braised meat at least. Han Yu. It had been a long time since he heard his mother's voice. He bowed his head, his eyes a little sad. The nagging words of his mother that he used to hate and resent were so warm. There was a sparkle in his eyes. He stood up and said to his mother. Don't let mom go buy some grilled meat. Wait for mom for a while. No need, mom. The banchan here is the best. Mom, give me some. I want to eat. Banchan or ban sung is the general name. Of the side dishes served with cooked rice and Korean cuisine. His mother looked at him suspiciously. The table was full of dishes that she had cooked for him. He scooped a spoonful of rice. A bowl of white rice was very sticky and delicious. When he ate it, he felt the taste that he had not tasted for a very long time. His mother was picking vegetables, turned her head and saw him eating rice. She said, I know, you can't eat the food at the market, right? He softly answered, no. He folded the vegetables and kimchi and said, it's very delicious, mom. I really wanted to eat this meal. Then, he stuffed everything into his mouth. He ate so fast and so much that his cheeks were swollen. He ate and apologized to his mother in his heart, I should have helped mom cook for a lifetime. I'm sorry I couldn't keep my word. His tears slowly flowed into lines. Because he ate too fast, he choked. He kept coughing. Mom saw that and told him, Yu Hyun, eat slowly or you'll get full. Hanyu wiped his tears and replied, because it's so delicious. Mom heard him praise and was very happy. She smiled and said, Mom's cooking skills are not gone yet, right? At this time, someone came to buy things outside. Auntie, do you have radish kimchi and rice kimchi here? Of course we do. Mom answered the customer. Do you specialize in banchan here? There are many types of banchan, so whatever you need, just tell me. The female customer said, Do you also have braised tofu? Mom answered, Yes. Mom kept introducing to the customer, I have fresh tofu that I just made. It's delicious and rich. You should try it. But the customer refused, No need. Just give me radish kimchi and cabbage kimchi. Hanyu inside heard the conversation of the two people, put the chopsticks on the table, shouted, try it. Then, he stuck his head out, said loudly, everything here is delicious. I guarantee it. It caught the attention of the female customer. When he saw that she was young, he couldn't help but blush and stutter, sister, you're beautiful. His cheeks flushed, he smiled shyly. The girl hesitated, looked at him for a while, then covered her mouth with her hand, smiled brightly, I know you're joking, but I'm still happy. The handsome young man has guaranteed it, so I have to try it. Can you get it for me? Mom stopped him, said, don't talk nonsense, eat your rice. Hanyu still tried to say more to promote the sale, it goes well with rice. Thank you, sister, come again next time. On the way home, mom said to Hanyu, you're beautiful. My son doesn't know how to say those flattering words, very suspicious. Are you dating? He immediately denied, no, absolutely not. Back to the family home, Hanyu stood in front of the door, thinking about the past. After going bankrupt, the family struggled to live. When the door opened and the old room that had existed in his memory appeared, he stood in front of his old bookshelf, exclaimed, it feels like pulling out an old movie. Like the time before digital machines. Who cleaned it up like this? He reached out to get something. He thought to himself it must be mom. He took out a red notebook from the bookshelf, his face was quite happy. 
and it was a picture of him bathing in the sea when he was little. Hanyu couldn't help but laugh out loud. His face was very gentle. He remembered this was when he was very young, very strange. I thought I grew up lonely and stubborn. It turns out I also had fun with my friends when I was little like this. Outside the door, someone walked in. He hesitated a bit when he saw Han Yu's shoes in front of the door. The man in front of him was his father. On his wrinkled face, he had a bit of sadness. Han Yu was still in his room, looking around, wondering, but my room is so small, why is it different from what I remember? Outside, a coughing sound came, making him pay attention. The man covered his mouth, coughing as he walked in. Han Yu saw him through the door, softly called, Dad. He didn't turn his head to look at him, but just said, You're back? In his heart, he muttered, He doesn't even want to look at me, how much he is hurt. Don't avoid me. Han Yu thought, This is why I came back here. Han Yu looked at his father, thinking to himself, the first task that I have to solve is my father. The man was turning his back to him. It was 6.50 p.m. Han Yu gathered all his courage and approached his father. There were only 38 hours left until his interview. Looking at his father's gloomy back, he thought, if not now, then only tomorrow morning to make up with dad. There is not much time left. Thinking so, Han Yu moved closer to his father. This time, he had to make up with his father at all costs. Direct attack. Han Yu spoke first, Dad, it's been a long time since you drank a beer with me. The father heard that and stopped. He glanced back at Han Yu and then turned his face away, forget it. Han Yu was still determined. He thought, if it was before, I would have been disappointed and left. But I'm different now. Thinking so, Han Yu called out again, Dad. Congratulations. You passed the first round at Hansung. You just need to pass the interview round and you can work. You're about to go out into the world, but you're still so clueless. So I want to hear your advice one more time. The father's footsteps stopped again. The father stood there, looking tired, answered, What advice? You're smarter than me. Even if it's just a small gap, you'll find a way to squeeze through it. That's Han Yu's style. Without hesitating any more, Han Yu stepped closer to where his father stood. Han Yu thought, I can't believe I applied the interpersonal skills I learned for ten years with my father. Han Yu slipped his hand into his father's. Han Yu hugged his father's hand, happily said, How can you ignore your son who needs your help? I forgot all the drinking skills you taught me. I'm sure I won't make it in the world. Do you intend to leave me alone like that? Han Yu acted coquettishly with his father. The father saw that and smiled and said, This guy is really something. That night, the two of them drank at Han San restaurant. The sound of sizzling grilled meat and the fragrant smoke rising from the cooked meat were also when the awkward atmosphere reached its peak. The father and son Han Yu sat in silence, no one said a word. They just ate grilled meat. Han Yu looked at his father and thought, should I start slowly? Han Yu looked down at his front. On the table was a bottle of soju that had not been opened. Han Yu thought to himself, I'm looking at you. The magic potion that melts people's hearts. Thinking that, Han Yu immediately acted. He picked up the bottle of soju and poured a glass for his father, please accept a glass from me. The father was still stunned by Han Yu's action. In one breath, the father and son Han Yu both lifted their glasses and drank. Han Yu was drinking half a glass of soju when suddenly someone said, Di Hu, you said you were going home but you came here to drink, ha? Huh? In front of the shop were three friends of the father who came in. They greeted with a cheerful face, Trung Tan, I came to see you again. One person pointed at Han Yu and then turned to the father and asked, Who is this kid? The father of Han Yu calmly answered, My son. Hearing that, they kept praising the father, Wow, our director Han has a handsome son. One person came closer and patted Han Yu's shoulder, 
I'm Kong Du, just call me Director Khan. Han Yu also politely stood up and bowed and replied, Hello, uncle, I'm Han Yu, the son of the proud father Han. Hearing that, the colleagues of the father all praised Han Yu, the kid is very polite. Han Yu just stood there and smiled awkwardly. Han Yu thought to himself, these uninvited guests, please go somewhere else. This is not in the plan. And so, in no time, they drank all four bottles of soju. Director Kong kept patting and inviting Han Yu to drink. He held a glass of soju and said, You are Han Yu, right? You have a wonderful father, you know? Han Yu answered, Yes. The others also added, That's right, big brother, do you know what kind of person your father is? Very good, very kind. There is no second person like that in this world. Han Yu thought to himself, Oh, these people are drunk. Director Kong, his face red from drinking, he happily said, Me, back then, if it wasn't for your father's help, I wouldn't be in this world anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? The friends next to him also said, Thank you, thank you very much. Everyone here owes your father. Hearing that, Han Yu fell silent. Because of the word debt. Debt of gratitude, sold land to build a factory. The image of the bottles of soju scattered on the floor. We were also in trouble and kicked out of the street. Why worry about the world first? Han Yu remembered that time, he stood behind the door and looked at his father. But he just sat there, bowed his head helplessly, drank glass after glass of soju and said nothing. Han Yu continued. At times like this, you have to think of your family first. The father still quietly poured soju. Father, say something, justify yourself. The father looked inside the glass of wine, dripping down. Those drops of water could be wine and could also be the helpless tears of Han Yu's father. The father picked up the glass of wine and said, Yu Hyun. Even without that money, we can still struggle and those people will die. He picked up the glass of wine and drank, if we only save ourselves, then it's not right, son. Looking at the helpless back before that fate, he couldn't help but feel sorry. Suddenly, the voice of Han Yu's father rang out, extinguishing his thoughts. It's true that there's nothing he can't say in front of his son. He quickly picked up the phone and left, saying, Stop it now. Get up quickly. His friends were still sitting there and continued, If not now, then when can we say it? Your face is red already. Another person added, Director Han is also embarrassed in front of his son. The owner of this table, Han Yu's father said. At the wine table, Director Tsung said, Yu Hyun. Now the hardship of father and son is over. Finally, God helped. God must help. Han Yu thought. God helped? Director Khan glanced at the distance and replied, Ahead, if the Yusang complex apartment is built, Yusang will use bricks produced by father and son. Han Yu replied, Yes. Han Yu thought, Building Yusang, how did he remember that he had read a newspaper article with the title, Yusang Construction Bankrupt? Han Yu suddenly realized, That's it. So in the end, his father still couldn't recover. Han Yu suddenly fell into thought, looking at his father and Director Tsung talking happily. Director Kong ran to his father and said, Hey, big brother, let us pay. Owner, take my card. Han Yu's father smiled and replied, Okay, today I'll pay. Leaving the restaurant, they said goodbye to each other. Director Kong said, Director Han, if you need people, just call me anytime and I'll clear all the work and show up immediately. The others said, yes, big brother, we'll run right away. Because your work is also our work. Be sure to call me. Han Yu's father said back, I know. You guys, be careful. That night was a full moon night and very bright, the moonlight shone on the shadows of the electric poles. Han Yu and his father were walking together on the way home. Han Yu thought, when the company was in trouble, I thought of throwing away the employees first, but my father protected the employees first. 
Han Yu stood from afar and looked at his father's bowed figure walking awkwardly under the moonlight. Han Yu thought further, he finally kept his position, but lost the most essential thing. His father's back looked so miserable, even though he was very tired, he still tried to walk home. Han Yu thought when he was young, he thought that his father's wind-shaken shoulders looked pathetic. Han Yu suddenly smiled and told himself, the real pathetic thing is my vision. It turns out that my father is a very great person. Han Yu moved closer to his father and said, wait for me. Under the moonlight, Han Yu finally had the opportunity to talk to his father. Han Yu said, I'm sorry, dad. The father asked, what is it? Han Yu said, everything, sir. Because I'm incompetent, I made you very sad. Han Yu's father replied, forget it, it's over. Han Yu still tried to say, but this word is necessary. Han Yu had not finished his sentence when he stopped and fell silent. He was surprised to see his father standing still and looking at him. He looked up at him and said, congratulations on passing. The words just now made Han Yu a little surprised. Han Yu's father walked and replied, your parents can't do anything for you but you are still so talented. Han Yu felt very happy when he heard that his father recognized and praised his achievements. Han Yu continued, I will wait until I pass the interview round before I accept the offer. His father replied, Oh, you little rascal. Han Yu changed the topic and asked his father, Did you sign the contract to distribute bricks for you saying? His father answered, How do you know that? Han Yu replied, Director Kong told me just now. His father said. The contract has not been signed yet, his face was thoughtful. It has to be smooth, I'm worried to see you and your mother struggling in the market, I feel very sorry. Han Yu thought. Fortunately, there is still time, but how to explain that we should not sign a contract with Yu Sang? Han Yu fell into deep thought, unable to say that he had seen it in the future. At dawn, the sky was still bright. Under the flickering moonlight, on the far wall there were two figures kissing. Han Yu and his father on their way home passed by that alley. Suddenly a woman's voice in the alley rang out. Let go! I said let go! The scream just now startled Han Yu, he turned his face and looked at the wall in the distance. The quarrel grew louder and louder. The woman said. Let go! The man replied. What's wrong? You said you liked me. This can't be. That was Han Jia Hai. She swung her boyfriend's hand and walked away, saying. Go away. Her boyfriend Wang Dong Chio frowned and replied. What's wrong with you? Seeing that, Wang Dong Chio tried to reach out, grabbed Han Jia Hai's hand, and said. Don't come back here. Jang Du Trio continued. I took you home, what's this? What kind of pretense is this? Hanahayu, do you think I'm stupid? You little thing. He was about to raise his hand to hit Han Jia Hai. Hanahayu screamed. Let go! Suddenly Han Yu stood above and said. Can't you let go of your hand? The voice just now made both of them look up in surprise. Hanahayu was stunned, she said. Her boyfriend Wang Dong Chio looked confused and said. Han Yu repeated one more time, Wang Dong Chio finally let go of Han Jia Hai's hand, but his face was still very annoyed. Han Jia Hai looked up at Han Yu who was smiling at her, saying, You! At this time, Han Yu stood tall in front of Wang Dong Chio. He coldly stared at him and said, I heard that there was a boy who kept following my sister, so I was very curious. Is it you? Jang Du Trio, his face wrinkled, frowned, thinking, it seemed like he had just met for the first time. How did he know his name? Han Yu asked him, I heard that you are famous in this area, a libertine who specializes in beating girlfriends. I heard that you always break up with your girlfriends like that. Hearing him say that, both Han Jia Hai and he were shocked. Han Jia Hai turned to ask him, you said that there were some nonsense rumors, right? But is it true? 
Hearing her ask, he angrily said, It's not, it's not. Don't you trust me? I've never hit a woman. It's just some weak guys making up stories. Seeing that he refused to admit, Hanya made a move, bent down and revealed his big secret. You once beat your girlfriend to have a miscarriage. Seeing that he knew his secret, he was horrified. The two people asked in unison, What's wrong? Although they used the same words, each person had a different meaning. Wang Dong Chio's name was sweating profusely, hurriedly looking for an excuse. It was a misunderstanding. I accidentally pushed her lightly while we were arguing and she slipped and fell. She fell by herself and blamed me. As soon as he finished speaking, a slap from Han Jia Hai hit his face. She emphasized, fell by yourself? Then she shouted at him to get lost without hesitation. At this time, everyone had returned home. Han Yu called her back to talk, but she looked very tired. Ignoring Yu Hyun's call, she waited a while and went straight into the room, locked the door. And Han Yu stood outside still trying to knock on the door calling her to talk to him a little. Jia Hai. Jia Hai then said from inside. Please stop, I'm not stupid for once or twice. I'm also fed up with the lectures of the brilliant big brother. Leave me alone, please ignore me. He was silent at that time, thinking with a gloomy face, 